is obstructing the peace by putting forward reservation. I want to put clearly to Kenyan people that uh, this reservation are not intended to obstruct the peace agreement. Rather, it is to, in, to indicate the difficulty in implementation of this agreement. The government of the Republic of South Sudan, President Salva Kiir, on the 17th of August, was in Addis Ababa. When the agreement was presented to him, after looking through that agreement, found that there are so many things which are not agreed on by the two parties. And therefore, he requested EGA to give him 15 days to come back home to have consultation with all the stakeholders and constituents in the Republic of South Sudan. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important to put on record that uh, the difference between President Salva Kiir and the rebel leader Yang Machar mm -hmm. and then the leader of the FD is that President Salva Kiir is governing the country. Mm -hmm. He has a constituency which he is he want to, he have to consult. Without that, the agreement will be a piece of paper. So when President came back, he conducted thorough uh, consultation with all the stakeholders, political leadership across the country, 10 states. And then from there, they came with conclusion that the area of reservation, for example, the agreement asked for demilitarization of Juba. Mm -hmm. Later on in the final agreement, they changed that from demilitarization to security arrangement. Mm -hmm. Still it means the same, that the, the army of the Republic of South Sudan, called SPLA, has to withdraw from the capital of Juba 25 kilometers. This is for Kenyan audience. Just ask a simple question. The National Defense of, uh, Forces of Kenya, if they are asked to pull away from Ken uh, Nairobi, 25 kilometers, mm. what is the meaning of that? South Sudan is a, a sovereign government, a republic voted by the people of South Sudan, accepted to the United Nations as a member state. There are no half membership for, for United Nations or half members of African Union, even no half members of IGAD. So we are saying that we are equal member of African Union, we are equal member of IGAD, the same like Ethiopia, the same like Kenya, same like Uganda, same like Sudan. So we should be treated with that dignity. But the way this agreement has been presented, it literally imposes on people of South Sudan. And then the way it is imposed, it does not have any precedent anywhere. Let me give you a good example. You see, we as people of South Sudan, we have been treated like a guinea pig. Even if a sick person go to hospital, you say, go to your doctor, mm -hmm. the doctor will ask you whether you have an allergy before they give you any prescription of medicine. But this peace agreement was given to us without even our being inquired whether the implementation, what is the consequence mm -hmm. Put that aside, let me ha address the issue of reservation. Mm -hmm. The reservation are one of them I just mentioned here, the issue of pulling the army away mm -hmm. from the capital. It's been contested, and we want to find a way to walk around it so that it is implemented mm -hmm. in such a way that the agreement must succeed. President Salva Kiir has been accused that he has been stonewalling the agreement. Mm -hmm. If there's anybody in South Sudan who really cares for peace in South Sudan, President Salva Kiir should be on top of that. I'm not saying this because of what we want to preach and support his position. He has been working since 2005 mm -hmm. to unite all the rebel groups to build peace in South Sudan. He sacrificed so much to make that the CPA work. The Comprehensive Peace Agreement, which is the baby of Kenya, which was signed here in 2005, up to today, two key articles are not implemented. Ten years down the road, for example, the issue of Abia are not being implemented. The border between North Sudan and Republic of South Sudan are not being implemented. Still, President Salva Kiir thought that in the interest of peace, we must move forward. This reservation, for example, the second one is the, the rebels are controlling six counties, six counties out of 32 counties in Greater Upper Nile. Mm -hmm. For Kenyan people, they don't understand what I'm talking about. You see, the, a county in, 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 South, in, in, in the Republic of South Sudan, mm -hmm. Greater Upper Nile means Jongole State with 11 counties, Upper Nile State with 10 counties, Unity State with 11 counties. So the rebel control, they are, they are present in six out of 36, mm -hmm. 32. So 26 are under government control. When IGAT presented this document, they gave the control or originally these three states to the rebels. They appoint the governors, they have the majority there. Now the question the government is asking is, what is the rationale for granting the government the rebel control of this area? Mm. If it is population, they don't have. Okay. If it is the area, they don't have. Mm. So we were saying that these are the issues need to be controlled. Another issue which is very critical is the verification and monetary team. Currently, when we sign 
the session of hostility in January 2014, there was verification and monitoring team constituted by IGAD. This body has failed to give direction. Whenever the issue statement, they say both parties have violated the CPA, the, the, the agreement, not the CPA, but the succession of hostility. You see, my brother, even if the two armies are shooting to one another, somebody must pull the trigger first. They cannot put trigger simultaneously at the same time. So why, what it that we used to say is that both parties have violated this. So we are saying that the body which is put for verification by IGAD in January 2014 cannot continue to be the one to verify the current ceasefire. That's why that is what I'm talking about come yeah. about. All right, let me just ask, okay, so that, those are some of the reservations, but what will it take for this agreement to work in terms of even regionally? Because the agreement was signed in the presence of several heads of state, so what, what will it take for it to work? What is the good part of this um, agreement? I want to say that uh, the Republic of South Sudan is committed to see this agreement work. It's better to have half cup full than empty cup. We, uh, as a government, and the president said, we wanted to see this agreement succeed. The reservation was extracted to, to act as indicators that down the road we see the danger in implementation. So this is why we want Kenya as the core member of IGAD and the rapporteur of IGAD, Ethiopia, which is the chairing, Uganda, which is, which is a member of IGAD, South Sudan, uh, Republic of Sudan is a member, they need to look at this reservation instead of dismissing it. Let me say this to you, my brother. This agreement is to bring peace in South Sudan. It is not to bring peace in Kenya, not to bring peace to the United States of America, not to bring peace in UK or Norway. These are the Troika members. It is to bring peace in South Sudan. Therefore, the, the people who are the, who are the owner of this peace agreement are the South Sudanese. Therefore, we were urging the international community to give people of South Sudan a chance to narrow down the differences in terms of the implementation so that they negotiate implementation. Here in Kenya, in 2007, when there was a conflict, Kofi Annan made the agreement, and then he left. It is left to the Kenyan people to find a way how to implement it. It is the two principals who decided to find a way to manage that agreement until it is succeeded, and then you have election. But can somebody also argue that uh, South Sudan has been given a chance before uh, to make this peace, and that's why maybe now the international community is coming in hard with the sanctions and all these kind of things? My brother, an imposed peace cannot succeed. We have seen it in many places. The international community went to Libya with the force, killed Gaddafi, imposed a the government there. Look what happened in Libya now. Is that example we want in South Sudan with the imposed peace? Look at Yemen. They removed the government, they put a new government there. Imposed solution. What do we have in Yemen today? God forbid. We don't want that scenario for South Sudan. We want an agreement which is workable, which can bring long peace, long term peace in South Sudan. Kenya had a stake for this peace in South Sudan because situation in South Sudan have better impact on Kenya. If you see today, the Kenyan currency has, has, has a problem. Because of the, like what they call a trade between the South Sudan and Kenya. We have half a million Kenyans in South Sudan. This majority of them are sending per day 1,000 Kenyans sending through M-Pesa. Any person working in Kenya here, your Kali worker, can never get 1,000 per day. This is the kind of economy must, Kenyans must understand. What is at stake here? Mm. Sanction in South Sudan, sanction in Kenya. Because if this over half a million cannot transfer money through M-Pesa to Kenya, it will have an impact directly in Kenya here. So we must put it in proper context when we are talking about this problem. So the people understand bread and butter issue here in Kenya as well. Mm -hmm. So we are urging Kenyan government, indeed the Kenyan people, to understand that this is stability in South Sudan is not for South Sudan alone. It is for Kenya, it is for Uganda, it is for all the neighboring countries. Therefore, it is in the interest of all of us to see this peace succeed. Not because of the pressure of the Western world, they will walk away and go away, like happened in Libya, in, in uh, Yemen, but they will leave us with the mess. So we are saying that we as the people of the region must take charge not to dismiss the reservation put by the President Salva Kiir, rather to engage him to see how do we make it to succeed and work. Mm -hmm. And so how, how exactly will, will it work, apart from engaging, is, that, is, is the President, for example, also willing to seed some ground and get seed some ground until you find a sort of middle place? President Salva Kiir already seed the ground. Mm -hmm. You see the, the, the way the, this conflict started. Vice President Riyamachar was removed through the reshuffle. Okay? Reshuffle happened anywhere. This agreement reinstated Riyamachar 
back to his position. So the question is, if Salva Kiir is not a person of compromise, somebody who you have dismissed as a president, and the international community imposing him back as a vice president, you would have said no. But in the interest of peace, he said, let us have this arrangement to give people of South Sudan peace. Because what we need in South Sudan really is a peace, not power, not positions. He also went further saying, we forgive everybody. We must put aside whatever happened. So many people have died on both sides. Those are the issues. If you say tit for tat and eye for eye, then there will be nobody living in South Sudan. So these are the kind of things he undertaken in the interest of peace. But this does not come out clearly. People, this has been buried in accusations, ultimation, threat by international community. So we are urging members of the international community and the Security Council of the United Nations to see that peace can succeed only through negotiated settlement. Threat, even if the United Nations impose sanctions, it can never bring peace in South Sudan. This must be put clear on the record. We rather want them to engage to see that what has been signed, let us make it to work and succeed for the security in the region and then peace in South Sudan. All right. Uh, those, uh, that was Ambassador John Duku. He is a peace envoy um, who is in South Sudan and they, as he said, uh, negotiated settlement and all different facets uh, that will make the agreement work in South Sudan. And of course, uh, the not just Kenya, but in the entire world is watching Africa's youngest nation and to see what exactly will go on there. We do uh, hope for the best in that region and that everything will stabilize and there will be lasting peace in South Sudan. Thank you so much for making time for us. Thank you.